In this presentation, we will talk about the cash receipts journal. The cash receipts journal will be used when we have cash receipts when using a more of a manual system or a data input system that we will be doing by hand as opposed to an automated system. It's still useful to know the cash receipts journal if using an automated system for a few different reasons. One is that we might want to generate reports from an automated system similar to what we would be creating in a manual system for a cash receipts journal. And two, it's just a good idea to have uh, different types of systems in mind so we can see what's the same and what is different between different accounting systems. The cash receipts journal will be used for every time we have cash receipts. So the thing, the transaction triggering a cash receipt will be when cash is being used. And we're going to have a little bit more complex complexity in a cash receipts journal than something like a sales journal because we may be receiving cash for multiple different things. Note that the main thing we will be receiving cash for most of the time is going to be something like sales. If we make sales um, consistently for cash rather than on account, then that would be a great use of the cash receipts journal because we can have just two line items and record those two uh, record those two out here and then sum them up at the end of the month. Or the other common transaction would be to receive cash on account, the other side then being accounts payable. But there are other types of things that we can be dealing with with cash and those things we're typically going to put into the other category when dealing with those items, breaking them out then at the end of the month when we do the adjust or the journal entry at the end of the month. And we'll total these up in order to then record the journal entry at the end of the month. Note that the cash receipts journal is most effective when we have many transactions that are much the same. And we would record all those transactions for the time period, whether that be the day, the week, or the month. In our case, it will be the month. And then uh, sum them up and record the one journal entry for them at the end of the time period. So we're going to have the cash receipts journal. Once done with the cash receipts journal, we will then do the, the general journal, a general journal entry, which may seem like more uh, work because we're doing a cash receipts journal and a journal entry, but we are only doing one journal entry rather than a bunch of different journal entries here throughout the time period. Just one journal entry, one debit and credit, or it's going to be more than a debit and credit for this transaction, but one journal entry as opposed to many in order to record the entire period's worth of data, in our case, the month's worth of data. Then we would post that to the general ledger, and then the general ledger will be used to create the trial balance. So let's go through some transactions. We're going to say on 7-1, we've got the owner deposited money into the business bank account, $3,000. So 7-1, we're going to say the owner is going to be the account credited, and then we're going to have the explanation is going to be the owner investment. So we'll give us some explanation if there is a uh, vendor involved, or in this case, a customer involved, we'll typically have the customer here. The cash then we're going to say is 3000. We will always have this column here being a debit because it's the cash receipts journal. Anything where we got cash, we'll have a debit in the cash receipts journal to cash. The other side, then we're going to put into other credit. It's going to be an other credit because it's not going to be a normal type of thing that we will have an owner investment. Probably is not going to happen many times throughout the time period throughout the month. Hopefully not that many times that the owner has to put money in to the business. They want to be taking the money out and therefore we will put it into the other breaking that out uh, at the end using this account category here to do so. Next item, we're going to say borrowed from the bank that happened on seven one. We're just going to say the bank uh, for the account credited. And then we're going to have the explanation. It's going to be a bank loan. Once again, we will have a credit to uh, cash because we are, we're always going to, I mean, I'm debit to cash because we're always going to be increasing cash here because it's the cash receipts journal. The other side then is going to go to other again, because once again, we don't think we're going to have too many bank loans. Hopefully that's not the reason we're getting cash most of the time. And hopefully most of the time we're making sales or getting money on account for sales made in the past. So we're going to put that into other breaking it out at the point in time that we make the journal entry at the end of the time period. In this case, the end of the month. Next transaction on 7-9 received cash for work that will be done in the future. So we're going to say unearned revenue is going to be the account that we will be dealing with because uh, remember our journal entries here, we'd have to kind of know our journal entries to figure this one out. If, you know, if we got cash, then we can't credit, we debit cash and we can't credit the revenue account. 
we're going to have to credit something else. Re reason we can't credit revenues because we have not yet earned it and therefore can't uh, record it until we earn it under the revenue recognition principle. Therefore, the credit will then go to the unearned revenue, a liability. It's going to be an advanced payment. So the customer paid us in advance. In other words, it will be an increase to the cash as always the 360. If this were a normal sale, uh, it would then go to the sales column, which we would break out into a normal column. But because it's not a normal sale for us, we got paid uh, before, we're going to put it into other, breaking it out at the end of the time period to unearned revenue. Now, if we were a type of company that always had unearned revenue, in other words, if we did something like uh, newspaper subscriptions and we always got paid before we uh, did the work delivering the newspapers in that case, then we would have another column of unearned revenue and that would be our normal transaction. But for most companies, we do the work before uh, we get paid or at the same time and therefore this transaction would be somewhat unusual next transaction 720 completed job for s company received 250 will receive uh, at a later date 300 so we did work and we got some money but not all the money this is going to be a confusing transaction because uh even if we just said uh, we we did work and got cash even if it wasn't broken out between these two it's often something that, that we will get wrong in terms of what journal entry will go into because clearly we made a sale. We completed a job. We basically made, made a sale in that case. And you would think it would go in the sales journal. But the sales journal is only there when we have something on account. And in this case, we got cash. So anytime you get cash, even if it's for a sale, it's going to go into the cash receipts journal rather than the sales journal. So we're going to say the S company is going to be the company. We, we want to list out the company here um, so that uh, we, we can know what the subsidiary account will be. And uh, so we don't need to have the, the account credited here because the account will be in the sales column for this case. What we do want to do is, is break out who we're selling to so that the accounts receivable component will be there. Uh, explanation will be sales. And then we're going to say the amount going up is the 250. So we only got 250 out of the total uh, 550 that we did work for. The other side then is going to go, well, then we're going to have sales going up by 550. That being the 300 plus the 250. That's what we did the work for, but we only got 250 cash. Therefore, 550 minus 250 is the 300. The 300 going over here into the other uh, debit and that's going to be a bit confusing because you might say hey we got an accounts receivable right here why don't we record it to the accounts receivable because that's what this is going to be representing that's what we are owed from we sold 550 only got 250 therefore accounts receivable is going up by 300 but this column represents a credit to accounts receivable the normal transaction we would expect when we are dealing with the cash receipts journal because if we got cash related to accounts receivable it's because accounts receivable is then going down. Someone paid us off, therefore not owing us money any longer. So this is going to be an accounts receivable, but it's going to be a debit increase in accounts receivable. Not very normal for a cash receipts journal. Therefore, we're going to put it into the others category here. Next transaction, we're going to say that uh, completed a job for L company. Invoice 700 received 200. Uh, account uh, to be received in the future should be amount is 500. So now we're going to say that this is going to be the same type of transaction, probably one of the more difficult types of transaction. Although we made a sale, it's not going to go in the sales journal because we got cash and should be recording the cash received. So we're going to put it into L company here, and that's going to be uh, so that we can record this to the subsidiary ledger. Then we're going to be having the sales is going to be the explanation of what happened. We got cash of 200. We sold uh, something worth 700 or services worth 700 got 200 of it then we're going to say that sales went up by that 700 the difference 700 sales minus the 200 is the increase in accounts receivable once again not going into accounts receivable here because this is going to be the credit to accounts receivable it's going into accounts receivable here into an other account because it's kind of an unusual type of transaction Note that the transactions that have more than one account, of course, are going to be more complex type of accounts here, as well as any time we're recording <laughs> transactions with more than two accounts. Then we have on 727, received cash from in company for work done in the past. So 727, we're going to label this M company. Okay, we received work for, we received cash for work done in the past. 
we're going to call that received cash on account. So we got money basically on account, meaning we did work in the past and we're going to get paid now. Uh, we're going to say that the cash is going to go up by the 150 to the debit to the cash. The other side is now going to go to the accounts receivable as we would normally expect accounts receivable to behave when looking at a cash receipts journal. So the accounts receivable it would go down if someone paid us and then the cash side would go up. Next transaction, we're going to say receive cash from P company for work done in the past. So same type of idea. We're going to say in 730, we've got P company is paying us. We want to label that so we can record it in the subsidiary ledger. We're going to receive on account, received cash on account, received cash for work done in the past and then companies owing us for that work done in the past. We're going to say it's going to go up to cash of 425, the amount received, always debiting the cash in the cash receipts journal. The other side then go into the accounts receivable, decrease in the accounts receivable, this being a really normal transaction. So if we're in a type of industry where we make sales on account and then we collect on those accounts, this cash receipts journal would probably be filled with pretty much mostly these uh, transactions all the way down. If on the other hand, we make sales on account, then the cash receipts journal would be filled with mostly this column here. And these other columns are ones we really want to practice because those are the confusing ones in tests and in practice, but ones that uh, are more rare or not the norm or not the transactions made 90% of the time. Then we're going to total this stuff up. So we're going to total everything up in the cash side. We got the 3000 cash, the 8000, the 360, the 250, the 200 plus the 150 plus the 425, giving us a total of 12385 The accounts receivable, 150 plus 425 gives us a total of 575 in the sales, 550 plus 700 gives us a total of 1,250. In the other credit, 3,000 plus 8,000 plus 360 gives us a total of 11,360. And other debit, 300 plus the 500 gives us the 800. We're going to use these totals then to post one time instead of one, two, three, four, five, six, seven separate journal entries to the general journal and then use that to create the general ledger. So here's our information up top. Here's our totals. We're going to create our general journal just one time this time instead of multiple times. That's what's saving us time. So we're going to say first we've got the checking account. So here's the cash and the checking account. We will be debiting the checking account. It's going up. Cash is a debit balance. We're going to do the same thing to it, which is an increase or a debit. The other side is going to go to the accounts receivable. Here's the 575 going to accounts receivable. Accounts receivable being an asset and then having a debit balance, we're going to make it go down doing the opposite thing to it, a credit. Then we've got the sales. So here's going to be the sales item. We're going to call it revenue here. Sales is typically used for a merchandising company and revenue or, or fees earned or something for a service company. Uh, we will use the sales term here because it's often uh, used in, in the journals. When we have a sales journal, we typically call it a sales journal rather than a revenue journal. So we'll keep that term and we will look briefly at a merchandising company as well. Then we're going to have the other, which we have to break out. Note, we can't just use this 11,360 because we don't know which account it goes to. That's the point of putting it into other. We don't know where it goes. So we're going to have to look over here and say, okay, this went to the owner, owner investment. That means it's going to be the capital. Capital has got to be increasing. That's what represents the owner investing money in a sole proprietor. Therefore, we're going to increase capital. Capital has a credit balance. We're going to increase it, increase it as it says here with a credit. So we'll increase the capital. Then we have the bank. So the bank loan, another uh, other transaction in the credit. Note we debited, of course, for these both of these. The debit is already included here in the 12385 We already got that. We just need the credit side related to this amount. So the total is already there. We need the credit side. So in this case, it's going to be a bank loan. So that's going to be something like a notes payable that we'll record this to. Uh, that's a liability account. We need to make it go up. So we'll do the same thing to it. Another credit as is indicated here. Then we have the unearned uh, revenue. So unearned revenue here. Again, the debit, the cash is already included in this 12385 right there. Now we need to include the other side. In this case, going to unearned revenue, a liability account. Liabilities having a credit balance. We're going to increase it doing the same thing to it another credit then we've got the others being the 300 and the 500 adding up to 800 and that's going to go into the accounts receivable 
And note we can sum this up because these two we see we could see they're doing the same thing. It's both going to be the sales and it went to S company. Therefore, it's going to go into accounts receivable and we can just put that into the accounts receivable one time and increase the accounts receivable here. Then we're going to take this information, this journal entry, and post that to the general journal. So we'll just list out the general journal or general ledger, the general ledger accounts that we have. So the cash is going to be here. It started at zero. We're increasing it 12385 to 12385 by this amount of the entry. And then we've got this 575 to the accounts receivable, bringing the uh, 2070 balance down by 575 to the 1495. Then we've got the revenue here going from zero up by 3,000 to 3,000. Then we've got the notes payable going from zero up by 8,000 to 8,000. Then we've got the unearned revenue going from zero up by 360 to 360. And finally, once again, the accounts uh, receivable being here, 1,495. And then we've got the debit of 800, bringing it up to 2,295. These ending balances then can be found and used to generate the trial balance. Note, of course, this isn't all the accounts to the general ledger. It's just the ones that we're uh, considering here. So here's the 12385 12385 Accounts receivable, 2295 is here, 2295 We've got the notes payable, 8000 here is the notes payable on the liability account, 8000 there. We've got the unearned revenue on the general uh, ledger here. It's going to be on the trial balance there. And finally, the capital account here on the general journal or the general ledger. And here it is on the trial balance. And then the revenue account looks like I'm not sure if I, I skipped the revenue account, but here's the 1,150. So it's going from 2,070 up by 1,150 to 3,320. That too here is on the trial balance and of course trial balance is inbounds debits equaling the credits net income now is including just this revenue uh, that we recorded in net income finally we're going to take a look at the um, accounts receivable subsidiary ledger because you'll note that these items here are dealing with customers and we want to break out more than just this item here we know how much people owe us but we need to know who owes us money so that we can collect on that money more easily. To do that, we do the accounts receivable subsidiary ledger. So we're basically taking our cash receipts uh, journal, looking at these items here to break out this number. So th this number that we uh, recorded, that's our ending accounts receivable. Here's the activity that we did in summary during the time period. And now we're going to have to break out that activity by customer. So first, we've got the uh, 300 here. That's where the accounts receivable for this transaction for S company. So S company made a sale and we have it. Uh, we didn't collect 300 of it and therefore S company owes us 300. Bringing the balance from 425 up by 300 to 725. Same thing for L company. They still owe us 500 for a transaction. Bringing the balance up from zero by 500 to 500. And then we have the accounts receivable here going down. For M company, we got paid and therefore are de decreasing the accounts uh, receivable. So here we've got the, the 500 going down by 150 to 350. And then the 425, same concept. We got the 1,145 going down by the 425 to the 7,720. <coughs> so then if we add up all the accounts receivable, we should tie out then to the accounts receivable in the general ledger breaking that out by who owes us the money.